Modern houses are an energy drain. A simple toaster draws a kilowatt of power. That same amount of juice could run 50 laptops. It would take a nuclear reactor to power all the toasters in a city the size of Detroit. What if our habitat produced energy instead of sucking it up? At Caltech, Dr. Nate Lewis is working on turning the sun into the ultimate household appliance. More energy from the sun hits the earth in one hour than all the energy consumed on our planet in an entire year. The potential for solar power has been around for five billion years, but humans only recently learned to harness it, and we're still not that good at it. Solar panels are expensive, inefficient, and they don't help at night when most of us are home. What if we borrowed an idea from more efficient solar collectors, ones that have been around for a few billion years? We know nature figured out how to get fuel from the sun with a leaf. We need to build one ourselves, inspired by what nature did, but make it more efficient and cheaper and be able to deliver energy from the sun as fuel. Leaves use photosynthesis to convert sunlight and water into sugar. Sugar is a chemical storehouse of energy, which is easy to release when the sun's not shining. Dr. Lewis's artificial leaf will mimic that process, but instead of making sugar, it will produce an even more efficient fuel, hydrogen. If his experiment is successful, each leaf would work like a miniature forest. Each tiny tree is actually a silicon rod thinner than a human hair. And just like a real tree, each one uses sunlight to generate moving electrons, the first step in photosynthesis. When you look at a forest of trees, what you see is something very long to absorb the light. So these nanorod structures that we're implementing have that same design. They're very long to absorb the light, but the electricity that we generate can move sideways over a very short distance out the edges of the rods. But by making it only move the short distance sideways, we can collect that sunlight very efficiently in the form of chemical fuel. To grow this microscopic forest of silicon rods, the artificial leaf team starts with a wafer of silicon covered with millions of copper microdots that help the rods grow. The wafer is then broken into small pieces and baked at 1,000 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes in a gas containing silicon molecules. When it cools, voila, freshly made micro rods. Both sides of the artificial leaf are covered with the silicon rods, which are bathed in water. On the top side, sunlight knocks electrons out of the water molecules and into rods. This creates oxygen gas, which vents harmlessly into the atmosphere. The protons that are left behind travel down through the middle membrane of the leaf and there meet up with the knocked off electrons. That creates hydrogen gas, which is collected in fuel tanks. It's a dream solution to our energy needs, but so far, it's still just a dream. That's because, in order to work efficiently, the chemical reaction needs a catalyst, and catalysts aren't cheap. The only existing catalyst that we know how to take water and make hydrogen that work really well are expensive metals like platinum. We need to find a way to replace the platinum with other catalysts that don't cost as much money and that can be deployed on large scale in an easy fashion. Once the artificial leaf gets past this hurdle, it will kick into mass production, but it won't look anything like a leaf, more like bubble wrap. You would roll it out on your roof, roll it out in a field, and then you would vent the oxygen, you would collect the hydrogen gas, and once you have that, you have a fuel that you can make electricity out of, you can use like natural gas, you can convert it into liquid fuels to power our cars and trains and airplanes. It would be comparable in the United States to the nation's numbered highway system. We already covered that amount of land with asphalt. We could do it again with something that people could roll out and never be hooked up to the grid and never have to pay for imported oil again. Now that's a power plant none of us would mind having in our backyards. The material used for artificial leaves could someday be woven into energy producing clothes. If your cell phone needed a recharge, you just plug it into your shirt and power up with a solar powered fashion statement.
Nature has already solved so many of the problems that continue to confound us, and energy production is no exception. Take the leaf. It turns light and water into energy. Well, if the team at Caltech is successful, we may soon have an artificial leaf capable of producing pure, clean hydrogen to power our homes, our cars, our entire way of life with little to no environmental impact.